In case you hadn't heard, which is probably impossible to not hear this, Disney bought Star Wars, or Lucas Films from George Lucas for four billion dollars because apparently Disney wants to own the world. Disney has again done some really good things, but they've also done some really bad things. As you can you can't get away from the fact that it's Star Wars. There's so many Star Wars things in it. So here we are back in the actual present, 2012. Now the movie is planned for 2015 and you have to think that's only three years away. And it's probably going to be a summer movie, so that's only two and a half years away. When I first heard about this, I was like, whoa, Disney bought Star Wars? What's going to happen to these guys? Hmm? There's no way that Disney bought Star Wars and said, hey, let's make a movie in two years. No. There, there had to be lots of planning for at least a few years before the sale took place. International Star Wars Day! Uh-huh. 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 Oh yeah! Today is May 4th. May the 4th. And today is International Star Wars Day because it is May the 4th. As in, May the 4th be with you. I'm also wearing my favorite Star Wars shirt. Ouch. <laughs> I guess it's real. <laughs> This hurts so much. This is the my Lego Death Star. I've got many things. I got the TIE Fighter right there. I've got the Emperor right there. The Millennium Falcon. All my Legos. There's the Star Destroyer. And so here's the original, and then here's the one I made. See the difference? Real one, custom one. Real one, custom one. They uh, um, yeah. It has come to my attention that we are losing in the war. This is very bad. Today I will be presenting to you a list of my top six favorite Star Wars movies. Number six, we get Phantom Menace. Boy, do I hate this movie. Number five, Attack of the Clones. This movie was very bad. Number four on the list is Revenge of the Sith. Not, not sure what they're revenging. Number three on the list is A New Hope. A New Hope is about a million times better than Revenge of the Sith, but there's only six, so I, I you have to put good and bad right next to each other. Number two on the list is Return of the Jedi. Return of the Jedi is the sequel to the sequel of A New Hope. And number one on the list, obviously, is Empire Strikes Back. So you have a twin sister who only one was wise to Is that loyal? If you will not turn, then perhaps she will give in to your head. You were mine. Long, long time ago, far, 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 far away. Long, long, long time ago, far, far, far away. Gracie, what'd you think of Star Wars? I thought it was a great movie. Yeah, it was really good. You could say, I liked it. Nine point five out of ten. Uh, 
I'm too excited to eat and act like I'm excited. That's it was I liked it. Good flick. Good job, J J. I don't know that J J Abrams. I don't know. I don't. I know the J J Abrams. I don't know what the J's stand for. Good job. I I was super super excited about the Force Awakens when it came out when I saw it, but when I watched it again and I thought about the actual things in the movie, I wasn't too crazy about it. The Force Awakens didn't feel like a Star Wars movie. Look, theme, camera-wise, see this is very hard for me to get across. From the two times I saw it, I didn't like it as much as I wanted to. Uh, I mean, that could have been the two or three years of hype that I had for it, but... Yeah. Anyway, Rogue One. The trailer for Rogue One, a Star Wars story, the trailer is out. And it looks... Uh, hmm. From the trailer that I saw, uh, I, I don't know how I feel about it. Uh, I want it to be really good, uh, but it doesn't look... Uh, if you can't tell, I'm having a very hard time wording this. It doesn't look as good as it should. Hi. Hi, Gracie. Excited? Yep. Sarah? Mom? Yes. Josh? Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you think of the movie, Mom? I liked it a lot. I loved it. Rad. It's day 16, and it is favorite special edition change. And it's at the end of Return of the Jedi. It's the victory celebration theme. It's gorgeous. It's amazing. It's beautiful. It's this sweeping uh, score that ends, you know, ties a bow on the whole trilogy. It's a really, really great piece of music. Now, I don't hate Yub Nub by any means, but the Victory Celebration theme is about a hundred times better. You know, good work, John. Okay. A documentary. Yes. Hello. We're off on our annual trip to see the newest Star Wars movie. What are your guys' thoughts on the movie? I hope it's good. <laughs> yeah. Father. Star Wars is always good. That's simply not true. But, uh, <laughs> I don't know, I think I'm looking forward to this. Force Awakens was awful. Rogue One was better. Okay, so we just got back from You're seeing right. The Last Jedi. Oh, I dropped it. <laughs> These guys loved it. I thought it was okay. We really liked it. You can't just blindly love something just because it's Star Wars. Oh, I like it because well, it's course. Star Wars. That's exactly what Dad said. And yeah, you but guys, you like and, you, and you don't see the problem with that? Which is why you're part of the problem. Don't ruin the <laughs> movie for us. Get out. Everything I'm about to say about Star Wars, possibly, probably gonna change in the next six months to a year. I loved The Force Awakens when it came out. I made a video about it. It's very cringy now. I gave it a 10 out of 10. You know, two years later, I hate it. it six months after that, I hated it. We're not here to talk about Force Awakens. <laughs> Cause I could, go, I could talk about that for hours. Um, and you would not be pleased with any of it. I like Poe. That's what I was saying. I, yeah. I don't like Rey, right? There's some definite character problems with her. Why don't she, we're supposed to really feel this conflict that she has in the movie, but there, I didn't feel a conflict at all. I felt it more with like Kylo Ren. I would have loved it if Rey and Finn had died in this movie. I like Mark Hamill. I don't think Luke was written the best throughout the movie, but Mark Hamill's performance was really great. I liked Rose. Her saying she's in love with Finn and kissing him at the end. Ew, that was gross. Weird. No, no, no that was so weird. Especially if we were going with my lesbian theory of Carrie Fisher. She was good. She was really good. Yeah. I did not like the casino at all. It was totally stupid, pointless penguin, pogs, pogs, what is They're it? They're <laughs> Porgs. <laughs> Everyone laughed when they were cute, which is the only reason they're in there. That was funny. Oh, hello, 
first of all, no, it wasn't. Another Second doll. of all, that's the only reason so they were there, dogs. and you reacted exactly how they wanted you to. The oh, jokes in this movie funny. were just the worst, they even worse than the last movie. Can that, you hear me now? All the jokes felt like the jokes they would make in the Family Guy parody of this movie. I liked, really liked the aesthetic of the planet. Super weird way to show us that it was, it was salt. salt. Some guy licks the ground. He's like. Oh, so. <laughs> it was a great movie. I still thought it was really good. It definitely yeah, it has some good movie. stuff in it. Uh, much better than The Force Awakens. Still some really terrible stuff. No. Yes. It was all from great. Yeah, from your point of view. Bias opinion. Okay, one more time. Let's do this. Stop! Oh, look at watch it's it's crazy! crazy. No! Alright, hello, mother. Hi. Sarah. Cousin, you're AC. Are you guys ready for the last Star Wars movie ever? Yes. yes. Sad. That is moment. I don't think it'll be the last one ever, but they Love say it is. Of this saga. That's what they say. Uh, Force Awakens, uh, rating out of ten. <laughs> for this the, the first one, the first okay. one of the new with the new uh -huh. group. Yeah, it was Han Solo. I thought it was well done. I liked the new characters, and I thought they fit into the Star Wars um, uh, universe very yes. well. Well, you give it a rating out of ten. Uh, nine. Sir. I am also going to say nine. Uh, all right. What about yeah, Rogue One? What'd you think? Out of ten. It was pretty good. I liked it. Uh, I give Rogue One eight. ten out of ten. Yeah. I really. Okay. Like eight, that. ten, sir. Ten. Alright, really uh, alright, Last Jedi. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what happened. Um, no? Was Luke okay. trains Rey. Oh, yeah. And then they're like, Kylo Ren and Rey are like, see each other. Yeah, 10 because but, I liked how they had like but, that weird connection. Yeah. And then was, like the the one scene that reminded me of like the Harry Potter mirror of Air. Harrison. Harrison. Uh, so. So you give it 10 out of 10? Yeah. Sarah. I thought it was good. Han Solo was killed. I thought that was in the Force no, Awakens. No, Force, Force, Force Awakens. That's why I gave Force Awakens a nine. All right, Jamie <laughs> said she'd never ever watch these movies ever again, but yet here we are going to the movie theater. <laughs> there's the a car cat. in she front of us. Seen this. Yeah. What do you guys think is gonna happen in this movie? I don't know. I cannot tell you. I can't remember what the ad was. <laughs> there's just Ray. <laughs> In the desert. What do you think is gonna happen, Mom? Ray's uh, gonna be in a desert. I think we're gonna find out who her parents are. Oh yes, that's oh, what I God. want to oh. find out. Like, and why she and Kylo Ren have that connection? They're secretly siblings. No, they're either siblings or cousins. Like, obviously, mm. they're related. But okay, <laughs> and maybe we'll get to see wide Kylo again, <laughs> the what? whitest man in the galaxy. Kylo. <laughs> oh. I think. There's gonna, I think there's, they're going to use part of the crashed Death Star to go back in time, and Palpatine's going to be all, <laughs> Wait, why back in time? Oh, there's a, I watched this really... Uh, it's the third one of this trilogy. No, no, I watched this really interesting, uh, well, it's the Red Letter Media predictions I don't video. I think should uh, incorporate time travel no, no, in the no, Star no. Wars universe. No, of course uh, not. There's already enough sci-fi. Yeah. But no, there's this it would be weird. great bit of the red letter right media there. episode 9 predictions video where uh where, where mike breaks down why he thinks it's gonna happen from like it makes the most sense from like the business point of view from disney so then i thought i know what they're gonna do what what has been done in star wars technological terror death machine yeah. gotta stop it gotta blow it up uh, bad guy two guys fight at the end yeah 
Well, you know what they haven't done? What? A horrible time travel story. Oh my god, that is the dumbest thing ever. I think it's really interesting, the reason why he gives it, but... Well, we're at the movie theater. We're at the movie theater. Oh my gosh. The movie theater literally don't usually come to It's fine. We're not that mad or anything. It seems like there's a lot of Cinema. Hopefully there's six tickets. Hopefully they're watching Cats. Yeah, hopefully there are other Cats movies. After we watch Star Wars, we're gonna go watch Cats. No. <laughs> we're gonna see Ew. Cats. What do you think, Mom? I think we're gonna, gonna see, see Cats. Frozen too. <laughs> Wait, that's James Corden yeah. as a cat. Ew. Actually, I would like to see Cats. But <laughs> no. If I had to choose between Cats and Star Wars, Star Wars is going to win every, every time. Every single time. Mm. Well, they tied that all together so nicely. Every iconic Star Wars character seemed to come together. I like that. All right, what'd you guys think? <laughs> 100 really out of 10. Like Wait, 110 is that what you said? 100 out of 10. It was the best one. <laughs> really so good. good. All right, Mother, anybody's got specifics? I don't know, it's just good. <laughs> wow. They tied it all together yeah. with everything. And Ray was able to take on her own name that she chose. Yes, I mean, uh, that was that was set up well. Yeah, go. I've got it, like, um, structurally. Um, I think, Ky I was thinking about that, and Kylo Ren dying works thematically. Ray living is a, okay, I guess. I think it still works. I think that works. I mean, because, like, at the end, obviously, her bearing the lightsabers was, yeah. like, a, you know, symbolism. Mm -hmm. So there's a oh. like, weird yellow lightsaber. No, no, I think it's that she made that one. Oh. I like that. Uh, I thought I it like looked it. pretty cool. Finally, shaking up the lightsaber design a bit. Okay, what about, like, anything before the last half hour? <laughs> I thought it was cool to see, like, more of, like, Kylo Kylo Run and like Ray being connected. Oh, finding out her parents or her grandpa really was definitely a shock. I was not expecting that. Happy Palpatine. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I don't think anybody was expecting What's that. What's up, Grandpa Happy Palpatine? <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't trust me. People were. Some people were expecting that. There's always people who try to make those crazy connections. But they well, yeah. No, there wasn't any time travel. But no, no, no. he Palpatine was alive. Mm-hmm. Well, yes. they like hooked up to some like thing. I also <laughs> uh, think the scene where like she's killing him and he's like his face is like, you know? That just reminds me of the scene where Harry kills Voldemort. Oh yeah, and, his and body uh, dissolves. And then Ray looks like Dobby when he dies <laughs> in in she Kylo Ren's <laughs> arms look just like Dobby and Harry's arms. Oh, my God. Dominic Monaghan was in it. That was great. I just love seeing Charlie happy. That dude yeah. from Alias died. All right, you guys want to give it a rating? She did. It's 100 out of 10. 100 out of 10, Sarah. Oh, like 10. Definitely 100 out of 10. Okay. Yeah, we got well, 200. I thought the max rating was 10. <laughs> Sarah go, only gave it a 10 out of 10. Well, well Gracie, I figured well. that was the max rating. Yeah, it is. <laughs> okay. Um, well, it's the max, and yeah, 10. 100 out of 10, and 100 out of 10, all right. It's nice to see all the, all the beloved characters show up. I think it was a good ending. I like when, it they all were together. All, when they were all saying Ray, you know, and then, like, you hear, like, Yoda's voice. And then and hear, Hayden like, Christensen was in yeah. there. Someone doing an Alec Guinness impression. Well, anyway, I'm not going to give it a rating, because I know, I know much better than to have an opinion right away, but, but... <laughs> Did you enjoy the movie? I think so. Yes. I guess I don't want to be hasty, but I think so. Good. Hold on.
So I've had like three weeks to think about this movie, and I said before that I wouldn't dare have an opinion on the movie right after seeing it. Of course I did, but I didn't want to say it because I knew my thoughts were almost certainly going to change. But honestly, sitting there watching this movie happen for the first time, I was really enjoying it. A lot of people have said this movie runs at a breakneck pace, and it does. So it was easy for me to get caught up in the moment, but I knew no matter how I was feeling at the time, I was going to feel very different later on. I take The Force Awakens, for example. Like, I do not like that movie. I don't think it is a good film. I mean, it's, it's well made, it looks very nice, but basically everything else, not so great. But at the time... 9.5 out of 10. <sighs> the idea that I would give a movie a 10 out of 10, let alone right after seeing it, that's just, that's nuts to me. Like, I can't believe that's actually something I said. But the rise of Skywalker. So, just to be clear, I don't think this is a very good film. I don't really like it that much, but there is some good stuff in it. And I don't think I dislike it as much as some other people do. Um, well, let's see. Let's talk about the good things. Um, again, the movie looks very nice. Uh, CGI is good as always. There's an opening sequence with Finn, Poe, and Chewbacca where they have to escape and Poe does this thing called hyperspace jumping. I think that's what they called it. Basically he goes into hyperspace and stops, goes into hyper hyperspace and stops and keeps doing that as a way to sort of evade. Uh, and people don't seem to like that a lot. I actually really liked it. I mean, I thought it was really, uh, it was an interesting idea. I thought it was presented and looked really well. It worked in the story, and it was a unique way to start off the movie. So yeah, I mean, I give that a, I give that a thumbs up. The movie does sort of go on a uh, scavenger hunt esque vibe, but the, I'm talking about the good things. All right, I'm talking about the good things. Um, well, I want to say Carrie Fisher did really well in this movie. But she wasn't in it. Well, I mean, she was. They used old, they used doctored footage, basically, from Force Awakens and The Last Jedi of Leia. Um, and I think, you know, the fact that they could not have planned for her death, I think they did all right. You know, it wasn't the best, but... I mean, her death is not done well, but you know what? But there's more good things in it. Um, I'd say Kylo Ren is probably at his best in this movie. The Last Jedi really gave him a chance to shine, but his turn in this movie is rushed but believable, and Adam Driver like totally nails it. At the very end though, he dies, and Rey lives, and I thought it would have been much more appropriate if he had lived and Rey had died, but you know, that's just me. Then Chewbacca dies, except he didn't. It was a fake out, so that's uh, not a big fan of that. I said I was gonna do the things I liked first, and then I immediately went to things I disliked. There's not a whole lot I like in this film. I've always been a fan of Rey and Kylo Ren's little force chat thing that they do, and uh, it's amped up a bit in this movie to the point where they can like actually touch objects where the other person is and basically like, teleport them there. You know, it sounds pretty dumb, but I actually liked this. And they did it a few times to set up at the very end of the movie when they use it with a lightsaber. And, you know, there's part of me that wants to say that's not how the Force works, but the Force has always been flexible. And there's a limit to that flexibility, but I think this stays within it, especially because it was set up so well. And the... <laughs> that, that lightsaber switch at the end? Okay. That was pretty awesome. <laughs> uh, just like in The Last Jedi, uh, the Holdo maneuver, where she busts up the uh, First Order using light speed, is one of the coolest things that we've ever had in a Star Wars movie. You know, and you know, same with this. Uh, but speaking of lightsabers, 
Luke's lightsabers back together again somehow. Uh, I actually really liked Rey's lightsaber that she made at the very end, so why couldn't she have used that throughout the movie? It would have looked cool. You know, that's just, that's just me. I think the worlds look very nice. They're very well designed. Um, there's the desert planet they go to. You know, all the desert planets look the same in these movies because they're all deserts. But I, I liked this little festival thing that was going on. Um, you know, add some random culture to the film. Everything after that, though, on that planet is basically a mess. They go to, they find Lando, end up in quicksand. Not this. I don't think it's in that order, actually. Yes, it is. And uh, they sink in this quicksand, and Finn tells Ray that he wants to tell her something. And then they go through, fall out the bottom of the quicksand somehow. Ray uses the Force to heal this snake, and it slithers away, opening up a path in such a oh, like. It did it exactly how it would happen in a video game, especially like one of the LEGO Star Wars games. You do this thing, you finally get this goal, and slow there's a way, and now there's an exit. I, I couldn't help but notice that. Like, at the time I was seeing it, I was like, that's like in a video game. <laughs> and then Finn never tells Ray what he was going to say. Was he going to say, I love you? Was he going to say he's Force-sensitive? Who knows? Um, but Finn in this movie, you know, wasted, again, uh, Poe continues to be my favorite character in these movies, uh, but that's mainly due to Oscar Isaac's performance. Uh, the character itself is pretty okay in this movie. I actually really liked the whole sequence going to this person from his past, this woman from his past, and getting to see sort of... Well, it's done in a way that shows it's as if we know this character you know the way it's doing it is like basically they're treating poe as a fully fleshed out person and these people come back and he's familiar with them and we don't have a ton of exposition and it just feels very natural and they go back and they um they talk to that little giblet i i don't remember what his name is but it was i i, I liked him that was cool uh this woman that poe used to be involved with you know uh, like they definitely could have had more screen time together, but I actually really liked the screen time they did have together at the very end <clears throat> You know he asked can I kiss you and she said no or she didn't say anything and just left I don't remember exactly which but they didn't kiss um, Now that was clearly done because people were having gay panic about Finn and Poe um, You know like personally like just those two, like the two actors, the two people, I don't know if they look like enough of a couple to me. Um, but that's unimportant, if they look like a couple. Uh, I, I think they should have just gone for it. They should have just made them gay, because why not? And also because there's never been gay people in Star Wars. Although there is allegedly uh, two women kissing at the very end in the background out of focus. So... You're getting there. Come on, JJ. Tom Friendly was gay on Lost. Was that the only gay character on Lost? It might have been. Either way, he didn't have anything to do with that character. I was just trying to make a jab at him. JJ Abrams, what a guy. Um, Force Awakens was directed very well. This movie was directed pretty well. But he also worked on the story and script for these, and it shows. I mean, you can always complain about his mystery box thing that he loves to do. It's his favorite thing in the world, but it's just... The story in this thing is just a mess. And I'm not going to talk about how it's a mess in every single aspect, because there's plenty of people out there that have already done that. One moment. Tell me get myself together. Now I got myself together. Now I made it through the weather. Better days are gonna get better. I'm so happy. The carbon night is on. I'm moving on. I'm so happy that uh, I'm actually not gonna talk super long here. I, I'm I wanna hit a few more points and then I think that'll be it for my my thoughts. Um Leia, again, not done that well. Her death 
she comes back alive. Uh, she force skypes Kylo Ren, and then she dies, and that sort of starts to crack away at him, and then it's like he t finally turns good. Um, Harrison Ford was in it, and he clearly did not like. I don't know how much they paid him, but it must have been a lot. He didn't cut his hair. He didn't shave. Uh, I thought it was, I, I really liked that scene actually with him in it, but it was clear, clear that Harrison Ford did not want to do that. But I do think that film, that scene was done very well. Um, and it was obviously almost exactly the same conversation they had in Force Awakens, but this time it's for the opposite thing. Um, actually, originally when I was seeing The Force Awakens, I thought that, I, like, they, they were being so vague that I thought Kylo Ren was talking about him being good back in that movie. But anyway, he, you know, Kylo turns in this movie and and Adam Driver nails it, like I said. I haven't even talked about Palpatine. <sighs> I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know what to say. Other people have pointed it out that these movies are basically all reactions to each other. J.J. made The Force Awakens, setting up who Snoke was, who Rey's parents were. Uh, then Ryan Johnson came along, and he killed Snoke. And basically, by, the, by doing that, he said, doesn't matter who he is. Rey's parents were nothing, nobodies. You know, shut that door on that. Uh, the whole ending of The Force Awakens with Luke up on that, you know, that hill in Ireland. Um, he, Ryan Johnson just, in The Last Jedi, Luke throws it over the edge. Luke's done with the Jedi Order. And I liked that. I liked all of that. I don't think The Last Jedi is a great film, by any means. But... Those aspects, I thought, were treated very, very well. And I really liked that. I, you know, I think it was a good, smart way to go with it. So it was a reaction, basically, to everything that J.J. set up in The Force Awakens. Then J.J. comes back for The Rise of Skywalker, and the whole film is just a reaction to The Last Jedi. Uh, you know, we have an explanation for Snoke. It was... Palpatine made him, I guess, uh, and then Ray's parents were nobodies, but because they wanted to be, since Ray is Palpatine's granddaughter. <laughs> okay, and then at the end, Luke and Leia are basically giving Ray the thumbs up, uh, with the lightsaber, and it seems like Luke is sort of done a 180 on how he was in the last movie because, you know, J.J. is doing it this time. There's a point in the first act when this little girl asks, you know, Ray, what's your name? Who are your people? And she doesn't have it. I hope she didn't say it too close to an Imperial officer because they might name her Ray Solo. But at the very end of the movie, someone asks her again. She says, Ray Skywalker. And she's just giving herself that name. You know, I think it would have been much stronger if she had said, it's just Rey. By the end of the movie, she has, you know, been become comfortable with, you know, she, she's not a Palpatine, she's not a Solo, she's not a Skywalker, she's just Rey. She's her own person. That would have been great, but that's not what happened at all. Every Star Destroyer has a Death Star abilities on it. You know, I, I kind of, I was kind of on board with this originally, but... It's just, it's just ridiculous. How many Star Wars movies have to do with a Death Star type thing, you know? Uh, Star Wars, uh, Return of the Jedi, The Force Awakens, um, The Last Jedi, you know, there was uh, that thing, this whole act at the end was about this Death Star little thing, and then in this movie. So that's five out of six uh, original and sequel films, and then you have the prequels, which don't touch on that. Thank goodness. The prequels. <laughs> that that makes me that reminds me of the prequels. Um, I have a complicated relationship with the prequels. I mean, obviously, I liked them as a kid. 
um, but kids are dumb. You know, I was born in 1999, which is the same year that uh, Phantom Menace came out. And growing up, I really liked them. And then I went through the phase of like hating on them. You know, especially thanks to the Plinket reviews, which are fantastic. Uh, but I really grew to not like those films. And now I've come back to a place where I feel completely comfortable saying that they are not good films by any means. Yeah, there's a couple good things here and there, but for the most part, not good films. But at the same time, I like them, which I know is like blasphemous to say. Prequels aren't good, but I like them, which I think is perfectly okay. You know, you can like whatever you want, as long as you're able to acknowledge whether they work or don't on a filmmaking level, you know. And that's what I think is the, the missing piece in how some people talk about the prequels. I know someone who, I, I'm getting off track, I know someone who sees their opinion as the same as the actual quality of a film or TV show. They basically use, I like it and it's good synonymously, which drives me insane. That's not how you criticize, that's not how you, that's not how you're, you should do it. All right, that's, jeez. And they can't wrap their mind around the idea that something that is bad, you can acknowledge it as that, you can recognize it as that, you can agree with that, but you can still enjoy it. It's like unfathomable to them, which, I don't know. <sighs> Rise of Skywalker. I mean, my family loved it. They always love it. Um, my dad loves Star Wars. He, he's loved Star Wars since the original Star Wars came out. And he likes the prequels. And he liked The Force Awakens. And he liked The Last Jedi. And he actually did not see The Rise of Skywalker with us because he was sick, but I'm sure he'll like this. My mom loved it. In, our, in the little video I made of us going to see The Last Jedi, I was sort of at, I, I was at a certain height of my hatred for uh, Force Awakens. So my dad said, Star Wars is always good. And, and my response was, that's simply not true. I mean, I don't think these are great films, but that's a horrible thing to say. I can't, I, I can't believe I said it, honestly. Like, why would you ever say that to someone? You know, I don't know. So sorry, I apologize for that, father, dad. <laughs> I'm not gonna act like I didn't have fun at certain points in this film. Whole sequence in the Death Star remains. Kinda cool, not that good overall, but looked cool. How would I rank the Star Wars movies? Um, it's actually something I, I gotta think about, you know, but uh, as far as the sequel films go, you know, again, it's like my opinion is still gonna change. It's only been three weeks. My opinion is still gonna change on The Rise of Skywalker. This is how we end a nine movie franchise. There's three more coming out. It's, they're already on IMDb. It's like five years away, three years away, something like that, and there's going to be another one. Because of course. I, they, I don't care how much they say it's the final chapter, there's always going to be more Star Wars. Disney owns Star Wars. There is going to be Star Wars around for eternity. I think I would put this one, The Rise of Skywalker at the bottom, Force Awakens above that, and The Last Jedi above that. So yeah, The Last Jedi I guess was the best of the sequel films. Or the least bad, I should say. I don't know. Kind of bums me out. I want, I want, I want to love these films. I want them to be good. At the end of the day, the truth is there's more bad Star Wars movies than there are good ones, which is a shame. Because I want to love them all. I want them to all to be great. At least the Clone Wars is good, and it's coming back on Disney Plus for another season. The Mandalorian. Oh my lord. I got, I got to talk about that at some point. Uh, I've only seen the first two episodes, so I, I'm not going to talk about it now. But so far, I like what I see. I just talked about it. Jon Favreau, great guy. Does so very solid work. So good choice for him. That's it.
I don't have anything else to say about that. So means I only have one thing left to do. Yeah, 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 yeah. Told me get my act together. Now I got my act together. <laughs> now I made it through the weather. Better days are gonna get better. I'm so happy the carbon night is gone. I'm moving on. I'm so happy that it's over now. The pain is gone. I'm hunting solo, I'm hunting solo, I'm hunting solo, solo.